there. My name's Ian Aitchison. I'm the CEO of, for the Asia Pacific region for COPC. I'd like to share with you today some of our recent research findings, uh, which will give you some insight into some of the trends around customer experience operations. I'm going to look at five main areas. The first area I want to look at are, are what's happening with multi-channel interactions. The second area I want to look at are around customer experiences with self-service technology. The third area will be around consumer experiences with human-assisted transactions. And then the final two things we'll look at are some satisfaction drivers, and then the impact of customer care on loyalty and recommendations. This data came from a survey that we conducted in the USA this year with more than 5,000 respondents. The first question we, we want to share the findings about are when customers have multi-channel interactions, we want to know whether when they have to use multiple channels, are their issues resolved? And across the board, about 80% of the issues are resolved. However, when you looked at why the customers um, went through a multi-channel engagement rather than a single channel, we found that issue resolution is much worse when customers are forced to use multiple channels, either through bad service design or through uh, issue complexity. It was much worse than it was when they chose to go through multi-channel, um, a multi-channel environment. Now this has a knock-on effect on customer satisfaction. So when we looked at the, um, we looked at those two groups, customers who are forced into the, the multi-channel environment and customers who choose to go through the multi-channel environment. And when customers are forced to use multiple channels, they are much more dissatisfied with the service journey than they are when they choose to use multiple channels. In fact, our research found that dissatisfaction is almost seven times worse when customers are forced into using multiple channels. So that's a, a, a touch on multi-channel interactions. The next thing I want to look at is self-service technology. And it was interesting, self-service technology, that the percentage of customers able to resolve their issues via self-service technology is going up. So although self-service technology issue resolution is relatively low at 69%, it has improved. Our hypothesis for this improvement is twofold. One, customers are becoming more used to, to using self-service technology to resolve issues. And two, organizations are investing more time and effort in service design to make self-service technology easier for customers. What we do find though is that issue resolution is vital in driving customer satisfaction. The biggest determinant of customer satisfaction with self-service technology was the ability to resolve the issue. Customers who reported having their issue resolved were seven and a half times more satisfied with self-service technology than customers who did not have their issue resolved. So being able to resolve issues is important, not just for satisfaction now, but it also changes behaviors of customers in the future. Issue resolution is vital in driving further usage of self-service technology. Customers who did not have their issue resolved were 15 times more likely to say that they would not want to use self-service technology in the future to resolve their issues. So we've got to make sure that if we are providing self-service technology for our customers, that the technology meets the customer's needs. Now, the next section I wanted to, to share with you were, were some of the significant findings around the consumer experiences with human-assisted transactions. And the first one I wanted to, to share with you was just how big the impact is in the number of contacts to resolve an issue on the main um, customer feedback metrics, such as um, customer effort score, top two box customer satisfaction, and net promoter score. The number of contacts required to resolve issues has an impact on all three of the major CX metrics. Customer satisfaction, customer effort, and net promoter score all reduce as the number of contacts increase. Unsurprisingly, the worst results are from the unresolved group, who had a net promoter score of minus 53. 
So resolving issues are important and resolving issues as soon as possible, as early in the service journey as possible, are also very important. But what else impacts customer satisfaction? So we looked a, a little deeper into some of the customer satisfaction drivers. And we found that yes, that the strongest driver of customer satisfaction was issue resolution. None of the other attributes we tested for in the research had a strong correlation on their own when assessed against overall satisfaction. This does not mean that they do not play a role in supporting customer satisfaction, but they have a secondary importance compared to issue resolution. Now, those other attributes that we looked at were things such as knowledge, speed of answer, friendliness and politeness of the person um, the consumer spoke to, the length of the conversation, the clarity of speech of the agent or the accent of the agent. We also looked at audio quality. None of them on their own had as big a, an impact on satisfaction as, over, as issue resolution. We did want to test something though. And so we tested what sort of an impact do transfers have on satisfaction? And interestingly, while repeat contacts on the same issue had a clear negative impact on satisfaction, the results of our surveys indicate that customers who are transferred also have a lower satisfaction rating than those who are not. So if it was the first call and their issue was re uh, resolved without being transferred, pr from this cohort of, of consumers we looked at, it was 76% top two box satisfaction. If it, was not, if, if it was the first call about the issue and they were transferred, that dropped down to 59%. If it was not a first call, so it was a second or third call, and their issue was resolved, satisfaction was lower than it was if it was a first call. But if it was the second or third call and they were transferred, that dropped down to 37% top two box satisfaction. So there's a lot of things that impact satisfaction, the number of calls, whether we transfer, and that's all around service design. And we think it's really important for organizations to focus on understanding the service journeys and blueprinting those service journeys to be able to drive better customer outcomes. Finally, I wanted to, to share with you what do customers say they're doing if they have a bad experience? And this was interesting, right? We um, surveyed a, a, a massive group of consumers and asked them, have you interacted with a, a brand's customer care department in the last three months? And 68, um, and sorry, in the last 12 months. And 68% of them said, yes, they had. And then we asked them, right, have you had a positive experience or a negative experience? 41% of all the customers that we surveyed had had a negative experience with the customer care department. And 31% of the total customers surveyed had shared the fact that they had a negative experience. In essence, 76% of all consumers who have a negative experience share that negative experience. Now they might share it online, they might share it with their friends, they might share it with their family, but every time you, every, um, bad experience you're delivering, three out of four times the consumers will talk about it and, and talk about what a bad experience they had. So again, let's go back to service design. Service design and managing service journeys will help you drive better outcomes for customers, which will reduce this, the amount of time consumers are talking about their poor experiences with you. We do know though that pragmatically, there will continue to be bad experiences and customers will continue to be annoyed. And, and so what we found was that um, a large percent of customers say that their experience they have has, a, has an impact on their future purchasing des, uh, decisions, right? So, so if you deliver a good experience, that, that might make them want to come and, and purchase from you more frequently. If you deliver a bad experience, that might drive them away or drive them to your competitors. As a strategy to retain customers, proactively contacting them after a negative experience to try to either solve the problem or even just to apologize for it reduces the impact that that negative experience may have on future purchasing decisions. In fact, it can reduce from 84% of customers who were not proactively um, contacted said it would impact their future purchase decisions can reduce it down to 78%. And 
Now that might seem like a small amount, it's only 6%, but think of the lifetime value of a customer and think of the cost of being able to, to contact them and apologize or, or try and fix that. It really shows how important a, a, a continuous loop in customer satisfaction is to drive better business outcomes. I hope you enjoyed the short briefing and the information, research and insights that came from it. If you're looking for even more research to support your operations, then please download a free copy of the consumer edition of this year's CXMB report. This report is packed with valuable insights which have been gathered by the COPC CX research team from more than 5,000 US consumers and has been created in conjunction with their partners, execs in the know.